and and his magical lamp. Chapter one: A Magic Uncle. There was once a lazy boy named Aladdin. His dad, who had run the family business alone, died of worry. Aladdin's mother was in despair. One day, Aladdin was messing around as usual when a man came up to him. Aladdin said, "He cried, 'It's me, Uncle Amzar, your father's long lost brother. I didn't know I had an uncle. I've been away for many years.'" That evening, Aladdin's new uncle invited himself to supper. When he heard that Aladdin didn't have a job, he bought him a fancy store to run. Aladdin and his mother were very happy. Neither of them guessed Ab Abnazar was really a wicked magician. The next day, Abnazar took Aladdin on a long walk out of the city. Here we are, his uncles. At last. He lit a fire, threw some powder on it, and said some strange words. A trap door made of stone appeared in the grass. Aladdin was astonished. His uncle could do magic. Under this stone, there are many treasures, but I only want one," said Abnazar. "Bring me the lamp, but uncle." No, but take this ring. It will protect you," he added, pushing Aladdin, Aladdin down the steps. Aladdin went through four rooms of gold into a garden of fruit trees. The fruit sparkled like pieces of glass. He saw the lamp, stuffed it into his pocket, and picked handfuls of. The pretty fruit. Hand me the lamp," cried Amnazar from the entrance. But Aladdin has taken too long finding it. Amnazar thought he'd been tricked. How dare you keep the lamp for yourself? Before Aladdin could answer, there was a loud thud and everything went dark. Chapter two, two genies. Aladdin was trapped. It was cold, dark, and very spooky. He rubbed his hands to keep warm. Suddenly, a huge man rose up in front of him. "I am the genie of the ring," he boomed. "What can I do for you?" "Wow! Get me out of here!" shouted Aladdin. In a flash, he found himself outside the grass. He rushed home to tell his mother what had happened. Abnazar can't be my uncle. He did magic things and tried to kill me. He said. He cried. You, you and your stories," said his mother. "Now, what do you want for supper? I'll sell that old lamp to buy some food." He start. She started to polish the lamp and jumped back in fright as a giant man floated up. Out. I am the genie of the lamp. Your wish is my command. Do you have any food? Asked Aladdin. Aladdin, I'm starving. In an instant, a huge feast appeared on silver plates. The food and wine last last for a week. When it had gone, Aladdin sold the silver plates. I'll give you a good price. My price is better. Now life was easy. If Aladdin or his mother wanted food, Aladdin just rubbed the lamp and asked the genie. One day, Aladdin was at the market selling plates when he saw some sparkling jewels. He's, they're just like the glass fruit I picked in the cave. He thought in an amazement. It wasn't glass after all. He ran straight home, found the jewels, and picked, and picked in the cave, and hid them. Chapter three, the Sultan's daughter. 
Early one morning, there was a command from the Sultan. Prince, Princess Badram Alpador will go to the public bath today. Everyone must stay at home. Aladdin wondered what he, what the fuss was, what the fuss was about. He hid at the bath so he could see the princess for himself. When she lifted her veil, Aladdin almost fainted. The only female face had seen before he was his mother's, but Princess Badar was beautiful. He skipped home with starry eyes and a smiley smile, and a silly smile. Whatever is the matter? Asked his mother. I'm in love with the Sultan's daughter. He said, "I must marry her." His mother laughed, but Aladdin was serious. If I don't marry Badar, I'll die. He said. He begged his mother to ask the Sultan for his daughter. Take him these jewels as a gift. He added, "The Sultan will never agree." Cried his mother, but she was very worried about her son, so he did as he asked. The Sultan lived in a grand palace. On his first visit, he, the Sultan didn't even look at Aladdin's mother, but she went back again and again until finally he spoke to her. "Why do you keep coming in to my palace?" She told the Sultan about her son's love for Princess Badar. "We are not worthy of your greatness," she mumbled. "But here's a small gift." I've never seen you so big. Hmm, but I just need a husband, the Sultan said. But you said my son could marry her. Cried the thin man beside him. The man was a powerful lord called a vizier. He whispered something in the Sultan's ear. Then the Sultan turned. To Aladdin's mother, your son can marry my daughter in three months' time. She said, "He said, I'm going to marry the princess. I don't trust the vizier." Chapter four: The Wrong Husband. Two months later, Aladdin's mother was in the city. Everyone was talking about a royal wedding. Princess to marry vizier's son today. Chad. A herald. Aladdin's mother rushed home to tell Aladdin the bad news. He was very upset until he remembered the genie of the lamp. He ordered the genie to discourage the people that very night. Put the vizier's son out in the cold and bring Princess Budai to me. At midnight, the genie brought Badai to Aladdin's house and left the bizarre son in the dark, damp street. Help! I won't hurt you. You are safe with me," said Aladdin softly. Before sunrise, the genie returned Badai and the vizier's son to to their room. "What's wrong?" asked Badai's parents at breakfast. You look awful, Princess Badar. Keep very quiet. That evening, the vizier's son prayed for a peaceful night's sleep. But at midnight, the genie came again. After another cold night on the street, the vizier's son had enough. I'm star sorry, Sultan. He said, "Your daughter's wonderful, but I can't hold with these horrible nightmares." Ah、oh, well, it doesn't mean to be," replied replied the Sultan, and he intended the marriage. Ended the marriage. Chapter five. Aladdin gets married. Before、uh, before long, Aladdin's mother ran back to see the Sultan. Tell your son to sell me more jewels, he told her. I want for I want forty plates full. He went on. Caring by any service dressed dressed in silk, only then can Aladdin marry Budai. The genie man man managed his 
easily within an hour. A long procession went on its on its way. The sultan couldn't believe his eyes. Tell your son he can marry my daughter right away. He told the lad his mother, but first the lad wanted the home for Bedar. He just he described his perfect pa palace to the genie, and the genie built it overnight. Marble floors, jewels in the walls. Aladdin rose rode to the sultan's palace. Dressed in his finest clothes, the wedding day began with music and dancing, and finished with feasting and fireworks. That evening, Badia went to her new home. She was delighted, and Aladdin was the most handsome man she had ever seen, and the and their palace was the best in the world. Chapter six. Abnazar returns. Far away in the desert, Abnazar learned of Aladdin's good fortune. He must have escaped with the lamp, he snarled. He went to Aladdin's city to find the lamp. New lamp for old, new lamps for old, he shouted. New lamp for old. Badar had heard the sound, heard the shouts from her palace. That sounds good," she thought, and found an old lamp to give him. Abnazar ran to a quiet corner and rubbed the lamp. "What can I do for you?" asked the genie. "Take me the palace and the princess to the middle of the desert," said Abnazar. Later that morning, the sultan looked from his window and nearly fainted. My, my d -d daughter's p palace has g gone," he said. He thought Aladdin had tricked him and sent some soldiers to arrest him. Aladdin returned from a hunting trip to find a group of soldiers and no pla palace. He was just as surprised as the sultan. "Don't worry, I found I I'll find your daughter," he promised. "You'd better, or else you're dead." Aladdin clasped his hands together in despair, and the genie of the ring appeared. "Oh, I, I'd forgotten about you," said Aladdin. "Please help me." "I can't bring Badar to you," he replied. "But I can take you to her." Seconds later, Aladdin was beneath Badar's window. "A wicked man tricked me." "Don't worry." Don't worry," Aladdin called. "I have a plan. Agree to it. Agree to eat with him tonight. I'll sneak with some poison, and you can put in his wine." Abnazar was so busy gazing at Bidar, he couldn't see her poison his drink. After a one sip, sip, he fell to the ground and died. Aladdin searched for. Searched the palace for his lamp. One wish later, he and Budar were home. Chapter Seven: The Evil Brother. They, but they still weren't safe. Abnazar had an evil brother, and he wanted revenge. The brother dressed up as an phantom, a holy woman. He stood outside Aladdin's palace, pretending to heal people. Budar was very excited to see Famita and invited her inside. What a lovely hall," said the big Famita. "But if you have a lock in from the dome, it will be even better." The lock was an enormous bird which laid huge white eggs. But I love Fam Famita's su suggestion and asked. Aladdin, no problem. Yeah, he said, and called the genie of the lamp. Bring me a roc's egg. What? Anything but that. Well, the genie, if you ask, if you ask for such a thing, I must kill you. But I know it wasn't your idea. He went on. Fabrice is a really abnormal brother in disguise. He wants you dead.
Lionel was shocked. He had to think fast. Oh, my head's so sore! He asked Farmer to heal his headache. As the evil brother came closer, Aladdin grabbed his dagger and killed him. With no more evil men to bother them, Aladdin and Badar were safe. In time, Aladdin became Sultan and his mother became a grandmother. They had all they could wish for, so the lamp and ring were left in a drawer. Who knows, the genie may still be there today. Bye.